Why are you laughing? Uh, hey, Dee, you want to open with prayer? I certainly will. Amen to that one. <laughs> we do thank you, Almighty God, Creator of this earth and all things in it, Lord. I would ask you, Lord, to forgive us of the mess that we've made out of this great creation of yours. Amen. Help us, Lord, to help others to step out of the darkness that they're stumbling around in, O oh God. Let us be the light that shines. And like the pastor said this morning, or someone said, let people ask us, what are you so happy about? And the simple answer is, I'm redeemed. Mm -hmm. I know the price has been paid for me, and I'm not going to bargain with anybody about it. And that's the truth of it, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God, for those that are here. Thank you, Lord, for those that have come that were here this morning, the great baptism, the great service, Lord. What a day we had this morning. Yes. Thank you, O oh Lord. We hope and pray, God, that it continues. Build a fire in this pastor, Lord, and have him preach the unadulterated truth to the people that need to hear it so bad. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done, everything you will do. And we only can look forward, Lord, to that eastern sky splitting and listening for that trumpet. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us as much as you have, even though we don't deserve it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I'm proud for Jessica and, and John. We are too. I know. <laughs> What's the baby's name? Thomas Wade. Thomas Wade. That's a good name. All right. Anybody uh, got a page number song they want to? One seventy nine. One seventy nine. Which one? Red or green one? Do Lord. Do Lord. Ah. One seventy nine. We'll do we'll do both first. <laughs> <laughs> One two. One two. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I say this, 
You can do it whenever you want, but I'm going to join it with when he comes with my stepmom, if you can get her in the doors. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right. Anyways, uh, I'll take her. <laughs> thank you. But anyways, uh, praise God. Amen. And please, and it's always been on my heart to say it in front of people, and God's put it on my heart for a long time now. Just please don't forsake your first love. No. If you have, please come back to him. Amen. He's trying to reach his people and they're shutting him out. Amen. And besides that, Brother Terry pretty much said everything else we needed to hear this morning. And I knew it was coming. Let's just say I got a lot more to say, but that's going to be for another time when it's ready. Amen. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That was that was good. That was great. This You're all good. All right. Right. I got one to follow Y'all don't, don't feel bad if I sit down because my feet go to sleep. Go for it. My, uh, I asked for prayer for my stepdad this last couple weeks ago. And... Um, I took him to the doctor on Monday last week and the doctor found nowhere where the ribs were broken and couldn't find the spot in the lung. But because of the original diagnosis from one doctor being different from his doctor, they went ahead and did the CT Friday. So we will know the results of the CT Monday or Tuesday, possibly Wednesday. So continue to pray, Amen. but as, as I believe, God has already taken care of it. He's already handled that. <coughs> and my brother-in-law, James, I just have to brag on him a little bit. God has done a remarkable thing in him. He has relit and rekindled that fire inside of James. And James is one of our Atlanta, well, not Atlanta, Cass County finest officers. And um, he has given his all back into God to do God's will in his job not just in his life, but also in his job. He is using his job as his tool to do God's work. So I thank God for that because he was lit up and jumping for joy Friday afternoon after I came home from work when he had to actually evict a couple out of their home. And this young woman 45 minutes later calls him and tells them tells him that they have got a home at Queen City Manor and it's in a whole lot better shape than they live in right now. So praise God. Anyone else? I'm going to go ahead and jump up now. Um, I just want to say God has feel so good and this morning's service was just whew, it was awesome. Amen. Yeah, so what I needed to hear and um, you know just just God is so good and we had this reminder you know, all y'all saw most of y'all got to see my little one this morning uh, I promise I really did not push her down the steps okay she did fall down some steps but it wasn't because I pushed her well, I thought about it but <laughs> uh, but you know better luck next time exactly <laughs> you know it was a reminder to me that sometimes god allows things to happen to protect us from worse things exactly yeah amen you know, and she fell at the football game um and we had not been out of that stadium five minutes before gang activity started breaking out god got me out of there because i'd have been right in the middle of all that and my girls didn't need to see me in the middle of all that. <laughs> and, I, you know, it, 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 it's all it was going to take to get me to be out of something like that, too. And thankfully, she's just got some sprains and some dislocated, well, I don't even know this dislocated, just some jams and some sprains and things, but she's going to, I know she's going to be all right. And, you know, but God, he does. He oversees us, and he speaks to us. 
because I was sitting at that football game at the, at the base of it. And guys, I looked evil in the face, not one time, but two different times on Friday. Two different times. One time I was sitting from, from me to you, from this young man. His mama's sitting across the table, another gentleman's in the room with me. And we'd start to talk to him, and he would just literally just disappear. He just if it wasn't what he wanted to hear, if it wasn't what he wanted to do, if it wasn't something that was going to glorify him, just shut you out. And I just, God spoke to me in that moment, and I had a gut feeling this boy does not need to be on my campus. He needs to go home, but I didn't have a reason to send him home. And I sent him out, sent him on to class. About 15 minutes later, the, the room number that I sent him to, there was a fight. It was not a fight, it was an assault. That young man did some horrible things to another young man. And I, I mean, that, it was just that confirmation, that gut feeling of, I know that was the Spirit speaking to me. That this, there is a demon sitting across from you. Something needs to happen. And I had that same feeling Friday night, standing at the base of those bleachers, looking up and, and watching the two sets of gang members in those stands. And I could just see, I could see demons sitting here. And I could see demons sitting here. And they were ready. And God bless it, there was this mama, these two mamas with these three sweet little babies sitting on the front row. And I could see fear all over their face. And I could see fear in the eyes of these babies. I just went over and I talked with them. And the, she, was, she was probably kindergarten, maybe five years old. As I was talking, she says, can you please make these bad people leave? Five years old and can recognize people. And I said, baby, I can't I can't make them leave because they haven't done anything for me to make them leave. But I promise you, I will be here to protect you. Right, I will God. be here to stand in in case anything happens. And I gave that mama directions on where to go when the game was over, which way she needed to head. And thankfully, it all broke loose before that had to happen. But to stand there and look up into the faces of these people who were so lost, so lost. But if you would have a conversation with him, I guarantee you everyone would be like, I go to church, I'm Christian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they're not. They're not. And as I'm studying the Revelation, they get ready for our Sunday school lesson in the face. And studying in the church of Pergamon, which is coming up next week, that whole piece of these people who claim to be Christians but won't do what they're supposed to do. Except for the seven words. They come in here, they look good, they say what they need to say, they walk out the doors, and they don't follow it. No. And there are so many, so many that are lost, that claim to be Christians, because they're in churches where we, they don't have a pastor who will speak the truth. And I'm so grateful for you, Brother Gary. I'm so grateful that you will speak the truth that God gives you. And I know it's true because you can't say it without just about falling apart because the Spirit is so heavy on you. It's so strong on you. <coughs> and if y'all didn't get chill bumps this morning, I don't know what you would do. <laughs> but you should have got a few. But, you know, I know. I know what I'm going. I know what I'm going. Well, I'm going to be facing when I'm no longer walking this earth. And I'm going to throw my song in there that I want to sing. Because <laughs> I have a mansion over the hilltop. Amen. And waiting for me. That will be on page 27. <laughs> Count on it. Page 27? <laughs> yes. Mansion over the hilltop. I kind of felt like it was. That's what you said it was.
favorite song. Have a good one. That's one of my favorites. You know, Brother Ben was preaching this morning about what if somebody come in here that's kind of, you know, people would look at them and think, you know, what are they doing here or something like that. I was thinking, what if there's a guy driving up the highway and he hadn't had a bath in a month and he reeks of alcohol and he's thinking, you know, I need to straighten my lines up. I need to get right with the Lord and all this stuff. And he come in here and he sits down by one of us and he smells like alcohol. You know, you can't shut the door on somebody like that or anybody. But anyway, how about testimonies? Anybody got testimonies? You know, to go on that, I I spent a lot of times in the woods and I see little deer wandering around and it, it's pretty stuff. And the other morning, I got a well right down next to the bio and uh, it's a little clear cut out there and it had rained and that sun was coming up and it was just beautiful. You know, I was thinking about Brother Gary's <laughs> looking to the east there because it was dead in my eyes. And on a big old tree out there that didn't die, it was just a big old stop sticking up and on top of it, was a big old bird, and it had its wings out trying to dry off. And I thought, that's an eagle, you know, I'm gonna take a picture of that. And I got it, I got my camera out and I made a little curve where I was gonna kinda get in front of it, and this thing was beautiful up there. And it was a buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I didn't take a picture of that. And, and that was the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Big old white feathers down the side of him. You know what I'm thinking, that's a nasty old buzzer. But, I bet you that's how we look to God sometimes. He's God's creation. So, you know, Amen. We, we're standing up there, and we're just an old stinky buzzard, but he, he built all this around this for us. Uh, I hate to be thinking about a buzzard when you was preaching this morning, but that, <laughs> <laughs> that's what crossed my mind because it was such a beautiful picture of one of God's creations, and I wouldn't take it because it wasn't what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a bigger weevil so I could show it mm -hmm. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Bo, Bo would like that buzzer. He sure would. Actually, Donna's t shirt now was a big buzzer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That buzzer's got a purpose. Just like he does. That buzzer. He does. Yeah. And, and you know, in God's eyes, He made him. He's a, he's a beautiful buzzer. And the background was perfect. And, you know, that's. I just think we. We probably look like that sometime. That's I think, a beautiful story. You know, I look real, oh, shine up and, and try to look good, but God, He knows. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just and, and see, I, I can see, I can see God created that buzzard for a specific purpose, mm -hmm. but I can't figure out yet why He created that mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even walk out in bright sunlight without getting bit. <laughs> it's funny though, the book that Jeremiah has had for us to get the free one, the gentle and lowly. There's a part in that book where it's talking about, you remember a time when you came a filthy sinner to the Lord, and he never snarled his nose up at you mm -hmm. once. <laughs> I think about that when you said about the person that would come in off the highway reeking of alcohol. You know, how would we, would we be Christ-like? We would forbear them. How would we trim it? He'd be coming in for a purpose. Right. And, and we, <coughs> a lot of people would reject him. Because God smells the same sin, whether it's hidden or if you read of alcohol, it's the same sin. I mean, in that book, there's a part I highlighted the other night, Sarah and I were reading it. And I thought, you know, I never thought about that. He didn't snarl his nose up when I came filthy and dirty to him. You know, we should be the same. Amen. There are people out there with dating that, or, or, you know, that are hurting a lot of people. But won't help. Any more testimonies? Page number. 241. What? <laughs> 241. 241. 241 and 63. I didn't hear it yet. 241 and 63. 241 and 63. Mm -hmm. One at a time. Don, you're always picking these songs. I don't know. That's, that's 304. Lydia. What are you doing between midnight and 4 o'clock? <laughs> really? You need to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this world is not my home. I know that 
It's looking, it's looking, one. It's looking less like my home all, every day. Man. I'm getting but sick of this home. I like this song too. <laughs> so we switch. Switch. Yeah, we switch. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. This world is done. We'll sing all four verses. <laughs> Go! 
that glory is important. Every knee is going to bow to Jesus Christ. Every tongue is going to confess that He is Lord. But if you wait till you're over there, you've waited too long and you ain't going to get to stay there. God help us to do that here. Do that now while we can. Thank God for... Uh, 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 what's your son's name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Thank God for Jeremy today. Listen to me. You want to know what glory looks like? When an old man can't hardly walk through that door. Answers an altar call. Comes from the back to here and bows down and can't get up and says, I wouldn't have missed this for nothing. Amen. That's it. Got up with tears flowing that while his grandson is getting saved before his eyes. That's it. That's, real. That's glory. That's it. That's what glory is about. That's what Christ came for. That's what Christ left us for. Is glory. <laughs> I like that word. Let's just keep saying it. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. 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 And Carrie picked that song. She sung right off the bat this morning. Amen. That 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 the holy, the holiness and the glory of God. Amen. We still get to behold the glory of God today. You believe it? Amen. We saw the glory of God today. We can see the glory of God tonight. We can get it. That buzzard was the glory of God that you saw. You already took that picture. I should have. Amen. Amen. You already took that picture. Because I don't remember seeing one with white wings. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. All right. So we, we get to behold the glory. His glory. And the Bible, you've heard a lot of people refer, how many of you ever heard of the, 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 the pouring out of the Spirit or the presence of God and it's called the Shekinah glory of God. Mm -hmm. That has a special meaning to the Hebrew people. And I'm going to get that to that at the end of this, but we are able to witness the Shekinah glory of God. The Shekinah glory of God has always been present. It's always been something visible, something that could be seen. In Exodus chapter 33, verses 8 and 10, the Bible talks about the tent of meeting or the tabernacle of the congregation, not the tabernacle we've been reading about, the one that was present before that that Moses had set up outside of the camp. Amen? Amen. Before God decided he wanted to be smacked in the middle of everything, he was up on a mountain, but when he got ready to speak to the people down below, there was a place that Moses would go, and it was called, and some uh, Bible's called the tent of meeting, or it was called the tabernacle of congregation, and Moses would go there. And the Shekinah glory of God, that smoke that covered the mountain, that cloud that they followed by day, would come down and get in this tent, and Moses couldn't even get in on count of it. Amen. When the glory of the Lord filled this little old tent, the people just fell down on their faces and looked. Moses couldn't go in. And the Lord would actually speak to them in an audible voice through that door. Wow. Man, you say, Whoa, oh, I wish I could see that. <laughs> oh, we, we sin way better than that. We got it a lot better than they do. But he didn't stop there. Later on he said, let's build a tabernacle. We just got through going through a long Wednesday night study about all of that stuff in that tabernacle and what it meant. And when they dedicated that tabernacle, Brother Troy, guess what happens? The Shekinah glory of God came into that place where the priests nor Moses again could even enter in to that building. Because the glory of God filled it up. They couldn't get in there. If they did, they couldn't have seen nothing. And, the, and it was a beautiful sight. And the people, guess what they did? They fell on their face again because they witnessed the glory of God and heard Him speak. Can you imagine? what that must have felt like. He don't stop there, Vicky. 
when Solomon built this beautiful, elaborate temple and they brought all those sacrifices in, thousands and thousands, and they began to slay these animals and the blood began to flow and the people began to rejoice. You know what happened? The Shekinah glory of God showed up and he didn't fill the tent. He, didn't fill, he filled the whole temple yeah. full. The priest had to get out of there. He filled it up. And it shook. And they all, you know what they did? They fell down and bowed down before him again. Wow. What a God we serve. Amen. He said, I'm letting you know I'm here. Where was he at every time? He was in the congregation of meeting. He was in the tabernacle. He was in the temple. I want you to know this house is his house. Amen. And when we get together in here like this morning, Every once in a while, we get to experience the glory of God. We ought to be able to experience the glory of God every time we come into this building. Amen. What stops Him from being here every time we walk in? We do. Doubt. Bad attitudes. Problems. Our mind many miles away on the wrong thing and different things. But on these days, on these occasions, their mind was on him. They came to hear him. They came to partake in his worship. They came for dedication of the buildings. And here he was. Now listen to me. This is important stuff right here. Because God had a plan the whole time. And his plan wasn't to have it a tent or a tabernacle or a temple. Wasn't his plan. It's the way he went about it. But that wasn't the end result of his plan. See, his plan was to dwell somewhere else. Amen? His plan always was to dwell somewhere else. I'm going to get ahead of myself. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 3, verse 16. This is what Paul wrote. He said, Know you not that you, and y'all hear that? Everybody say me. Me. That you are the temple of of God. Ha <laughs> ha. We have become the tent. We have become the tabernacle. Yep. We have become the temple. The place where the Shekinah glory of God wants to be. That's us. Brother Rick, that's who we are. Amen. That's what happened to Jeremiah. <laughs> The temple was filled with the glory of God. Amen. Isn't that beautiful thinking? And, and God did it that way. Hey, you know, God is mysterious. He does things in mysterious ways. But the time was not right yet for him to dwell in these tents. Amen. So he was with them. He was present with them but not inside of them like he is today. Amen. Know you not that ye are the temple of God. Now listen. And that the Spirit dwells in you. Now, the Shekinah glory of God that filled that temple, you know what that was? <laughs> It was the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, that fills our temple today. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, and so you are, we are filled with the Spirit, and so it is our work now as a filled tabernacle of God to do something for God. What is that? To glorify him we are filled with his glory so that 
our temple, our body, our person can glorify Him for others to see. Those people saw that temple full. They saw that smoke. They, they fell on their face. They saw that in those buildings. And they're supposed to see that in me and you. That's who we are. Glory is who we are. And so we're supposed to glorify Jesus Christ. John chapter 16. I, I, I use John a whole lot because he's, a, he's the one who explained all this to us so we can understand it. John chapter 16 verses uh, 12 through 15. Listen to this. He says, Jesus is speaking. John's writing what Jesus spoke. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. You know why they couldn't bear them, Troy? They didn't have the spirit of truth to, to show them and help them understand it. So Jesus said, I got a lot of other things I need to show you. And he's going to be able to show it to them later on. When they went back and read this stuff that they were writing down, wow, that's what he meant. Wow, Whoa, I know what he's talking about. That, what? How'd they do that? Because the glory of God was in them now. Amen. He said, yet you cannot bear them now. How be it? Now listen to this. When he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into half truth, little truth, piece of truth, some truth. He will guide you into all truth. Amen. For he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit is here to glorify the one who died for me and you. So he's, he's going to help them learn the truth of the words of the one who died for us. That's the gospel, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit is, is here for. He will guide you into the truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. Now where's he hearing it from? <coughs> You remember the Holy Spirit has access to something we and you don't have. He has access to the very throne of the wine because he's sitting on it. Uh -huh. Ooh, boy, it gets complicated with God's the Spirit. Amen. Amen? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I went to the revival over here at the church uh, at Golden Gate the other night and the preacher got up there and he said, God is a spirit and he needs a host. This is what he's talking about. He needs a host. He needs to be in us. And we do the work. We're the hand. We're the feet. We're the arm. He's the spirit. Right. We're the eyes. We're the ears. We're, the, we're all of that. That's why we're called the body of Jesus. And he says, He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak to himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Amen. Is he going to show us everything? Mm -mm. God don't work that. Never has worked that way. He'll show you what you need to know. And he'll show you what you asked him for. If you ask it in his will. He, look at this, verse 14 now. He, the spirit of truth, shall glorify me. That's what Jesus said. The Holy Spirit shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. Now what belongs to Christ? All things in heaven and in earth is his. So all that is, is his. So he shall receive of mine and he shall show it Unto you. Mm, what's good stuff right there, isn't it? You don't know how you get to know things. You don't know how to get to learn things. You know how to get to read the scripture and understand it. That's why you always pray. And the Bible tells us not to only pray. It says pray in the spirit. Now why would he tell you to do that? Because when you pray, pray in the spirit, you're contacting something inside of you that knows what you need to know and tells you and shows you that. Amen. Let me tell you this. 
The Spirit is so strong in us that when we don't even know what to pray for ourselves, he does. Ooh, glory, He does. Let me tell you this story. I'm going to get emotional here. And they called me the other morning and told me they had just given Jessica the epidural. A needle was at work. I was home by myself. And I began to pray for her. I started off praying, oh, we need a healthy blah, blah, this, and, and the prayer totally went south from there. I didn't know why until later. You know what my prayer wound up being? God placed people there with her and put your spirit in them and help them to get her through this. Amen. And that's just exactly what he did. Amen. He put a woman in her room at the exact right time <coughs> to stop a catastrophe or even the death of a baby. Praise God. Praise God. And when I got through praying that prayer, I thought, what did I pray that prayer for? The Spirit prayed that prayer. Because the Spirit knew what she needed. She needed that woman that knew what to do in her situation. God needs a host, remember? He uses us. We're his hands. Amen. Amen. And he used that. <coughs> and as I studied this, he showed me that. This is what this is about. And so he says here, he said, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore I said that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. This is what he says. So we can only glorify God how? Through the Spirit. A person without the Spirit of God does not have the weather with all, that's my southern word for today, to glorify God. He don't know how. Because he don't know what God requires of him to do that. The Spirit knows how we're to do it and reveals that to us. He shows us how we're to do that. Thank God for the Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank God for the Holy Spirit. We can only glorify God through the Holy Ghost that dwells in us. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. Listen to this scripture. But ye have an holy... Here's another good favorite word of mine. Unction. That's a weird word, isn't it? How many of you think you got an unction? Sounds like something wrong with your toe, don't it? <laughs> well, it ain't. It's something you want to have. Amen. An unction from the Holy One. And look at what he says. And you shall know all things. You have an unction from the Holy One and you shall know all things. And you shall know all things. Now what does unction mean? Unction means that we have an anointing. An unction is not a thing. It's a it. It's an anointing. And it is an anointing in the Hebrew of guess what? Oil. Or if you're from more Ravana, oil. <laughs> what is oil in the scripture? What is it? The lamps full of oil? What is it? It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit. The oil that we're anointed with is the Holy Ghost. And he is our oil of God that burns within us and gives off the light of Jesus Christ to a dark world. That's the unction that we have. When they talked about those lamp, lamps trimmed and burning bright, that's a picture of me and you. Amen? That's us. And he came back for those people with those lamps burning that way. The ones whose lamps didn't burn didn't go. Amen? Amen? They didn't get to go. They beat on the door and won't let them in. He came for the ones 
with the oil, with the light that was shining for him. Amen. And now, this oil burns within us. Now, let's get back to the Shekinah glory, and I'm fixing close. The Shekinah glory of God. What is the Shekinah glory of God? And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to find this in Scripture. This is a word that was used by Hebrews, a Jewish people. So you have to look at the Hebrew meaning. And I never like to really get down to the basis of definition of the word, but this, this is so pretty right here. You have to. And so what is Shekinah glory? What does that mean to the Hebrew when they say that? Because they know what that is. They know it's who filled the, the tent, who filled the tabernacle, who filled the temple. They know that. It was God. It was His presence. It was Him. The glory of God. So, it's the visible, this is the definition of it, the visible manifestation of God on earth now portrayed through his people. Now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Why Paul said, what? Know you not that you are the temple of God? So it is the, it is God's manifestation of himself portrayed in us. The word Shekinah in Hebrew means dwelling or one who dwells. Now think about that. So she kind of means dwelling or one who dwells. And so the words together, she kind of glory means he caused to dwell. That's good, isn't it? When Jesus told his disciples, before you do anything else, when he ascended up into glory, before you do anything else, you go into Jerusalem and you wait for something. Don't you do nothing else. The angel told him, do what he told you to do. Go into Galilee, was it? And, and you don't go nowhere else until you get what you need. What he told him. That's what they was doing in that room on the day of Pentecost. They was waiting on something. You know what they was waiting on? They was waiting on the Shekinah glory of God. The glory. And God, listen to this. The ones who were waiting, the ones who were where Jesus told them to be, the ones who were praying, and one man, one accord, all of a sudden, Something happens. They hear something first. Amen. And hearing turned to seeing, and seeing turned to receiving. They heard a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And then there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it lit upon each one of them. Amen. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. You know, a lot of people are afraid to use that scripture because they think, well, okay, you're agreeing with what those Pentecostals say about you got to have that, brother. I'm telling you, you got to have the Shekinah glory of God. They're you do do you no good to have no gift. Amen. Amen. It's just like that. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, I don't know, I know the answer to that because I know the scripture. And I got the glory of God living in me. He showed me all things. That chicken came first because God created that chicken and that chicken laid the egg. Amen. And anybody has to ask that question, number to rock in my book, or they need salvation. Amen. it. What come first? The spirit of the tongues. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Because the Spirit came first. God used that gift from the Spirit to speak to all those people in the street and they understood every word that they were saying. Amen. He caused the Spirit 
to dwell in us. Now I'm going to read one more scripture and i got to close. Listen to what John, old John, I love John. That's why he waited so late to write this book because he knew we are going to need to know something about this relationship. Amen. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18. Listen to this stuff. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay? I just threw that one in. That really ain't got nothing to do with this, but it does it too. Because you can't do that without the glory of God. And I, listen to this, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. You hear that? That he may abide with you. Now, now here's something else people trip up on. You believe Jesus? Do you believe Jesus? Yeah, How long does he say this comforter will abide with you? Till you mess up? Till you sin? Till you backslide? Till you just don't look like a Christian no more? I know what he said. What did he say? He shall abide with you forever. It's plain as a nose on your face. And who is this that I'm going to send? Who is this comforter? Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. I love this other part, because he shows you the oneness of God. But you know him. <laughs> they ain't never even seen the Holy Ghost yet. But he said, but you know him. Did you see that? You know him, for he dwelleth with you. Well, who was with them? Jesus, the one talking to them. I'm with you. You know him, because I'm with you right now. And, but he adds something to that, because it's something that hadn't happened up until now. Something that had happened to only a few. <coughs> Zacharias, Elizabeth, and John the Baptist that I know of. Amen. He said, He shall be, listen to this, in you. I'm with you. But He is going to be in you. He's going to fill your tabernacle. He's going to fill your tent. He's going to fill your temple. He is going to fill you up. Amen. Amen. And then he has this. He says, when this happens, I will not leave you comfortless. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus is still coming to people today. He's coming through the Comforter. He's coming by way of the Shekinah glory. Amen. He's coming that way. And He enters into us. He became one who dwells. And He dwells in us. And His work here is, in us, is to glorify the one who did it all for us. Amen. Are we doing that? Are we doing Jesus justice by the way we live our lives in the Spirit? Amen. Paul tells us that there's a warfare that goes on inside of us. See, when the Shekinah glory came to that tent and came to that tabernacle and came to that temple, everybody else, Brother Darn, had to get out. But the amazing, miraculous thing about the Shekinah glory living in our temple, listen to me, is that we don't leave. We stay here. And the Shekinah glory comes in with our spirit. And Paul teaches that our spirit must agree with the spirit of God. That means that we must believe the spirit over what we think is right or wrong. That's what we feel sometimes. 
that little controversy that we feel. Remember this, God's always right. Amen. And the only time we're right is when we're in Him. And the Spirit is teaching us and showing us what to do. How many of you ever didn't listen to that voice that said, don't do that? <laughs> How many times? Where did it get you? In a heap of trouble. Amen. Amen. I think about that, what they used to say about that old country boy. They said the last word of a country boy is always this. Watch this. <laughs> Y'all watch this here. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> Amen. And the Holy Ghost is standing on his shoulders. Don't, do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And he's saying, what's this? And he pays. Y'all, we need the, the Shekinah glory of God. We need him in us. And we need to use him. Believe him. Receive him. Question him. Let him pray through us and we pray through him. I like that. Why? Because he knows Christ. He knows what everything Christ said. He knows what he meant by that. And he says, I'm going to show it to you. That's my work. It's just a matter of how much of you is willing, that you're willing to give to him. Where you come a walking, talking, Bible. That's where he'll take you. And you know what you're talking about. You know truth. And you can see all of that stuff that sounds good. You know all the counterfeit. Why? Because you know the real God through that spirit. Amen. Brother Gary, I read where uh that the Holy Spirit's always with you once you got it. But if you backslide it, you know, like people that quit going to church and quit praising the Lord and quit studying the Bible and all this stuff for a period of time, the, the Holy Spirit's still with them, but He'll back up and quit speaking to them for a while. That's what I read. It's when our spirit overcomes and disagrees with the Holy Spirit, God don't stop that. That's something we must do is yield ourselves to the Spirit of God that dwells in us. Amen. That's what we got. That's our part. We, 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 we yield ourselves to Him. And sometimes we stand up saying, I ain't going to do that. He'll be saying, don't do that. We'll do it anyway. That's rebellion against God. Submit. Submit yourselves. Brother, would you read John 14, 23 before we go? <clears throat> St. John? That John you were just in. Thank yeah, God. thank God. And that and that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Amen. That is what the Shekinah glory <laughs> filling our temple looks like. And y'all, we always like to go around saying, oh, Jesus is in me. Well, are you in him? <laughs> Amen. That's a, that's a big difference. Than him being in you. And uh, he said, not only are you in me, you're in the Father too. We're all connected. We're all a part of a vine. And we all draw our strength, our sub substance, and everything we need comes from him. That's our relationship with God. That's who we are. He's always there for you. He's always there. Imagine, if you will, if the Jews still had the temple on the Temple Mount. And someone went in there and started drinking and got drunk. Or someone went in there and started doing something sexually impure. Or they did some other sin inside that temple. How would you feel? Horrible. And yet we are the temple of God. And what we do to this temple is no better than that. Right. Amen. And, you know, I, and I'm talking to myself just as well as anybody else. Because, uh, <laughs> Amen. I have 
badly treated this temple. Amen. Amen. What do you think? We're going to have a time of invitation because we got some, some uh, Holy Ghost business to take care of. We had a fellow come up here earlier and say, I want to join this church. Well, brother, we got a little procedure we go through. And so uh, you can come pray if you'd like. Uh, if you need to pray, we'll, we'll pray uh, with you. If you need salvation, we, we want to help you get it. If you need forgiveness, come and ask God to forgive you. You need something to know something from God. Come ask Him. He'll show you. So enough will. But if you want to join the church, <laughs> come up here. Come on. Amen or something and mess mess people up. <laughs> we run them off. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I'm just playing. I'm back there if I want to. Anyway, yeah, they grew up a little bit, thank God. <laughs> anyway, you see this bunch out here? Hey, they rough to look at sometimes, I know they are. But uh, you just have to pick and choose the ones you want to look at. But they, you'll not find a group of people that will love you any more than these people right here. They're going to call you their brother. Amen. Thank you. And they're going to love you as their brother. And they're going to be there for you as their brother. And if you ever have a need, you can call on any one of these people and say, I've got a need. And they're going to try their best to meet that need and help you. Amen. That need. If you need prayer, you call anyone and they'll say, I'm going to be praying for you. And they will. And we expect that same thing from you to each one of us. You got it. Because we're together. Amen. We're one with the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that being said, we're going to pray. We're going to call ourselves in special, in business, not special call. We ain't had one in a long time. We're going to have a business meeting here in a minute. And uh, y'all come by before we have a business meeting and give Rick the right hand of fellowship and welcome him. And uh, we don't know what Jeremy's going to decide yet. Uh, has Jeremy ever been baptized? No, sir. Ooh, I'm going to get that water stirred again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wet off us again before it's over. Amen, yeah. amen. You know what we had to, we just start baptizing on the floor in there. We just keep running water in there. <laughs> anyway, thank you James for taking care of that and whoever else helped. Anyway, thank y'all for being here. I'll come off for uh, Rick the Right Hand Fellowship, and we will call ourselves in business meeting, and we'll we'll start right after the closing prayer and the and and the love fest we're fixing to have. Brother Gary, there's one more thing we'll do for him. What's that? Biscuits and gravy and eggs on next Saturday, Saturday morning. <laughs> biscuits, <laughs> gravy and egg. Not, that ain't next Saturday. No, Saturday, Saturday after next. First Saturday of every month. First Saturday of every month. You have to be here at 7 o'clock or AD. Done ate it all up. Hey, man. <laughs> if you get here at a quarter to eight, he got it in the bag taking it home with him. You don't never know about this bunch out here. Anyway, we, we love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. And uh, and if you'd like to stay for our business meeting, we got some things we need to talk about and get taken care of. And so you just stay right here and they're going to come by and slobber all over you. <laughs> Brother Jim. Dismisses, please. Lord, we just thank you for the wonderful day that you've given us. Lord, just thank you for the opportunity to be here in this fellowship, Lord, in this church, in this congregation, as we see you walking amongst us today. Lord, just ask you to be with each and every one that's here. Just lead us, guide us, and direct us in each and everything that we do. That everything that we do may be for your honor and your glory. And Lord, let the world see your light shining within us. Lord, those that could not be here because of any illness or whatever reason, Lord, just ask you to be with them. Touch them in the way that you see fit. Just ask that you be with us as we go into this business meeting that everything that we do will honor and glorify you. Lord, we'll just ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.